Tux. No, not that kind. This one. Tux is the mascot for a operating system that's been growing a lot in popularity lately, which is Linux. So you've, you're probably familiar with at least one of two different operating systems right now. Usually with computers, you've got Windows or you've got an Apple computer, right? Well, what if I told you there was a third option? Linux. Linux is a free open source software that gets updates and support from the community as a whole. But what that means for the user is it's free to use, you can install it on anything, and if you do have issues, it's kind of easy to find someone to talk to. So today we're going to be working with Ubuntu, which is super user friendly, but there are a lot of different versions of Linux out there that are not as easy to install. So be warned, if you're doing this on your own, make sure it's on a computer. That's It's okay if all the data is erased, because that is what we are doing today. Anything you do to the computer will not be able to be undone without reinstalling Windows. So first, we need to get our version of Linux to actually put on our computers. So with Linux, there's a ton of different ones out there, one for just about everyone. These are called distributions. So with that, we're gonna look at a website called DistroWatch. So it just has a list of all the distributions available, and in some cases, it ranks them on how many downloads they get or how popular they are with people. So now that we're on DistroWatch, we are going to be looking at one of the most user-friendly distributions that is out there. So that is going to be Ubuntu. So there are a few different versions. We're just gonna go with the most basic one. This may take a while because it's an operating system. It's got a lot of files that needs to compile. Later. Now that it's done, we need to go ahead and add this file to a flash drive, ended up making sure that our computer can boot from it instead of our normal operating system. So for me, Windows. To do that, we need to use a special type of software that will write it exactly in that bootable way. There's etcher.io, I personally like this program called Ruffus. So let me go ahead and just pull up Ruffus. And what we need to do here first, is go ahead and put in our flash drive into our computer and make sure that Ruffus is pointing to the flash drive. It's very important to make sure it's gonna be overwriting and writing to the flash drive, not your computer. And once it's got that, what we need to do is where it says image file or disk file, we just hit browse and find our type of Linux that we downloaded. Look at that there. Now we just hit start and wait. Be sure not to restart it just because sometimes the computers will restart faster than we can react. So while you're booting it up, you need to get into your computer's boot options. So normally there are a few default keys that you need to hit while you're doing this. So it'll be either like F2, F9, or in some cases, the delete key. And so this will end up opening up the menu of everything your computer can boot from. All right, so while you're booting it up, it's kind of best to mash that button. That way you don't miss your opportunity to get to the boot menu. I'm in my boot menu right here, and what I wanna go ahead and do is select the one that says USB hard drive. It will go ahead and boot into there, from there. Usually it'll ask you what type of way you wanna boot in, so we're just selecting Ubuntu. All right, so now that is booting up, we simply wait. Later. All right, so now we're in our install window. So with this here, we've got different language options, and actually with almost every type of Linux, as long as it's able to run from your install media, so either if it's a CD or a DVD or a flash drive like we have, uh, you can either straight up install it or you can actually hit try that type of Linux. And you can run through, do some basic web browsing and just see how you like it. I'm gonna go ahead and run through our install so with this here, I'm just going to stick with a standard English layout. And then we have all of our wireless networks. I'm going to go ahead and connect to the uh, 
wireless here at the college. But here's where things get a little bit interesting. So unlike some t operating systems, Linux actually gives you a lot of opportunities of what all gets installed while you're installing it. So there's a normal installation, which will have like your web browsers, and then it'll also have your like Microsoft Office alternatives, uh, but it also has uh, like some video players and stuff like that. But if you just need something really lightweight, and fast and only for one task, you can do a minimal install. So you just have like a web browser and pretty much that's it. And you also have installing third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. Sounds really frightening. Really, just wanna go ahead and check that because what that ends up doing is it makes it a whole lot easier to use your computer because it'll go ahead and grab all the stuff uh, that makes your computer work from the people who made all the parts. And last up is Secure Boot. So if you have really sensitive information, you can use this to, it'll, what it does is encrypt your hard drive. So it makes it to where you have to have the exact password. Otherwise you can't read any of the data. But the downside is if you ever forget that password, that data is gone for good. There's no way to unlock it once you've locked it. All right, so this screen right here is just asking you in what way you wanna install it. Sometimes you can install Linux alongside other operating systems, or you can have it go ahead and erase everything and be the only operating system. So that's what I'm going to do for today. So I'm going to hit erase and it just tells me what type of operating system I had before and just reinstall. And it's going to pop up saying, Hey, are you sure we're going to delete all this on your uh, hard drive? And for this, I'm already prepared to do a brand new install. So I'm going to hit continue. All right. So now time zones, it's going to ask just about where you are so it can figure out the proper time. So since I am in the central time zone, I can leave it at Chicago. And last up is naming your profile. So just like how on Windows or Mac, you're going to have your user. That's what we're doing here. But you also get to name your computer. So here we are got my name. And as you can see, it's already detected that I have an HP laptop and filled in the name for me. But I'm going to go ahead and rename that to Linux. That way, it's very obvious what operating system I'm running on the computer, right? And then like standard your password. And you can have it go ahead and log in automatically. I definitely do not recommend that unless it is a small computer used for like a kiosk or something like that. And always require your password to log in. That's how you make sure, you know, no one gets into all your data that only you should have. All right. So from here, we just wait for the operating system to install. Later. All right. So now all we have to do is go ahead and restart our computer. And oftentimes, once you get into that restarting, it'll come up with a screen kind of like this, but it's simply saying remove installation media and hit enter. So that's just whatever you installed with. So for us, it is the flash drive. Now that it's out, I just hit enter and it will reboot into our new OS. All right, so now that we are actually into our operating system, all we gotta do is go ahead and log in, perfect. And there we go. We've got Ubuntu logged in. It's going to take a little bit of getting around and like getting to know your operating system now because it's quite different than Windows and pretty different from Mac OS as well. Uh, you still have your dedicated app store, which with Ubuntu, they've been working really hard on making it super user friendly and as easy as a click install. All right. So that's it for today's video. So if you found yourself kind of interested in computers or working with Linux, uh, there's a few different careers that are out there that have a lot to do with everything we talked about. One's being a computer support specialist where you're working on computers on the daily. But then also, if you are into any type of web development, you're going to probably be working with Linux a lot because most websites are actually run off of Linux servers nowadays. So those are two different avenues that you could see these types of skills in use. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you go ahead and like it down below and subscribe to the channel. And uh, 
Till next time, this has been Devin, and it's been a fun time.